Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Muhammad Nasrul Hassan. Welcome to our presentation on Fourier transformation in drive spectroscopic analysis on modified asphalt binder. With me, I have uh, my supervisor, Dr. Zahid Hussain from Arkansas State University. Asphalt binder is one of the most recycled, used, and versatile pavement materials in the construction industry. Um, Muhammad, sorry, but we cannot see your your presented slide. So I think you are using a different uh, screen. Uh, just give me a minute. Sure. Can you see it now? That's better. Yeah, we, we can see the presenter view, but that's that's better. Okay, thanks. So, uh, asphalt binder is one of the most uh, recycled, reused, uh, and one of the mostly uh, used pavement materials in the construction industry. Uh, as these asphalts are usually uh, collected or refined from the heavier portion of the petroleum resources or deposits. And 94% of the roads in the United States are asphalt pavement. So it's not a surprise why asphalt uh, is so important in the construction industry. Too often, uh, and it is also anticipated that the performance of an asphalt pavement will largely depend on the performance of the asphalt itself. So it is often modified with uh, various modifiers uh, to get uh, enhanced mechanical performances like polymers, uh, like SBR, uh, which is styrene betaine rubber, SPS, which is uh, styrene betaine styrene, polyphosphoric acid, and some of the researchers also uh, consider nanoclay as a potential alternative of the expensive polymer modifier, polymer modified binders. So the primary objective of, the, our, of this study was to observe any changes in the binder footprints or binder spectra uh, due to modification at different aging condition of asphalt binders. So for, uh, in this study, we took a performance grade of 64 minus 22 as our need binder and modified this need binder with several modifiers. First of all, we modified the need binder with 0.5% polyphosphoric acid, which increased the final performance rate to 70 minus 22. Uh, then we used 2% of SBS, which also increased the final performance rate to 17 minus 22. And then we used uh, the combination of 0.5% PPA and 2% of SBS, which uh, increased the final performance rate to 76 minus 22. And finally, we also tried 1% percent lavin b which is a kind of nanoclay, and it also increased the final performance grade significantly. <clears throat> and all these percentages and the modifiers came from a previous study. So the percentages is not something we made up, it came from a previous study. For our study, we used uh, Nikolai 8700 spectrometer and real crystal uh, infrared uh, potassium bromide cards to observe any changes in the functional group in the, within the binder spectra. So we can see the, you can see the device we used Nikolai 8700 at the bottom left side of the slide. And on the right side of the slide, we have the real crystal potassium bromide cards. <clears throat> So what we used here, we passed uh, infrared vibration through the empty card first, and then we all we also passed the same rays through a uh, through a card with the sample. And comparing uh, the resonance between the two cards, we got the spectra for the asphalt binder samples. And for result analysis, we've uh, used some specific parameters, though the ratio of bonding, we looked at some specific wave numbers, and these wave numbers also came from a previous study. We tried to look at these uh, six different uh, wave numbers to observe the variations. So what we did here, uh, we also tried to uh, scan the modifiers individually. So first of all, uh, we tried to scan the closed side uh, 11B, which was the nanoclay. And as we found that uh, there was no significant peak that we can uh, trace down uh, the nanoclay, but there's a slight bump near about the wave number 1030. 
uh, for PPA, yeah, we, there were some uh, ups and downs, but once again, there was no significant peak that can be associated or traced back to the polyphosphoric acid itself. But uh, when we compared the unmodified binder spectra with the uh, SPS modified binders, we found a significant variation in the peaks at near about 966 or 965 wave number. We also tried to for compare the changes in ratio of bonding. And once again, this ratio of bonding came from some certain formulas or some certain studies. We can see the formula on the screen here, which param the parameters we used. So what are the significance of these specific parameters and what are the what does the significant variation mean? So as you can see, there are like some significant variation and we also, uh, we were also able to find some significant trend from this variation. So first of all, uh, we found a distinguishable, uh, if, if I want to like summarize what we have uh, found so far, a distinguishable peak was observed for the SBS modified binder, which was due to the presence of betadine index centered around 966 uh, wavelength. And it decreased significantly after aging, specifically after long-term aging, uh, because of the interaction between the SBS and base binder. Uh, on the other hand, there was no significant peak found for the PPA or the nanoclay, although we found some uh, bump for the nanoclay itself. So, uh, FTR spectroscopic analysis was able to trace back the polymer nano polymer modifiers very efficiently, but not uh, other kind of uh, modifiers, mostly most specifically uh, PPA or nanoclay. Then if you can observe the carbonyl index, which usually centered around 9, 1690 wavelength, this specific parameters is very significant. And why is that? Because uh, as we know that uh, more aging, when asphalt exposed uh, to aging, it got oxidized. So the more aging an asphalt sample faces, the more of its carbon got oxidized. So this parameter here can be related to the aging extent of the specific sample binder. So with the FTR analysis, we can trace uh, the extent of carbonyl index, which is uh, or the extent of aging on asphalt binders, which uh, we can see it increased uh, eventually with aging, specifically or most uh, especially after uh, long-term aging. Also, with the aromatic index, which were centered around uh, with number 1600, have decreased where aliphatic index uh, were, which was uh, centered around 376 wave number and 1460 uh, have decreased after aging. So uh, we know when uh, the, the aging occurs within the asphalt binders, so the uh, chemical composition or the chemical components uh, have faced some interchanges. And uh, we also did some soil analysis or chemical composition analysis on asphalt binder. And the trend we found from FTR analysis also uh, matches with the trend we found from SAR analysis as well. So from this spectroscopic uh, variation, uh, we got, got, got some of this good insight regarding what's happening inside the asphalt binder during aging. And uh, we are still working on uh, trying to relate uh, the result of FTR analysis with the mechanical properties so that we can have a quick comparison of two binders from their uh, spectroscopic analysis, or at least we can get some idea from the spectroscopic analysis for their mechanical properties. So finally, uh, at the end of my brief presentation, I'd like to thank uh, Transit, of course, Aircon Memphis for supplying the materials, Mr. Shari Alam, Dr. Kilan Baumgartner, Dr. Hashimoli, and his uh, teammates for helping me, helping us with the study at different level. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Mohammed. Um, any questions from the attendees? So there is a question here uh, 
what was the reason for decrease in the aging due to the presence of SBS in the asphalt binder? Um, that was, uh, we, are, uh, we are trying to still uh, in, uh, investigate the reason, but uh, what we have found that the, the main uh, reason of that uh, peak we get from uh, at 966 wave number was the butadiene index. And uh, the butadiene index itself got disassociated uh, uh, with aging because uh, of that uh, oxidation during the aging. So this can, this is the reason we are uh, holding responsible for the decrease of the butadiene index. Oh. Mm -hmm. Any other question or comment? Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mohammed, for the presentation. Thank you. You can thank you stop so sharing your screen, yeah.